Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are Team One. Uh, first, let me introduce my team, teammates, uh, Kai Ti, Ken Long, and I'm Yu Chong. I'm here to present to you about Very Picking. Very Picking is a new model of searching. Searching uh, in online and information system. Uh, the person who came up with this new model is Marcel Bates. The reason why she came up with this model is because she believes that the traditional model of information retrieval does not best represent the actual behavior of how a user search online. So, uh, so let me show you an example of the traditional model of information retrieval. So on the right, you can see the user uh, is query. Uh, in his query search, he key in Obama's life and biography of Obama. So in the database, the, the document will retrieve the document with Obama biography and match with the user's queries. Uh, but uh, the model sounds good, but in reality, uh, it doesn't work like this. User, user behavior of search will keep changing as he finds new information. So instead, a uh, user may begin with a relevant reference, then he will find a, a variety of sources. Distributed condition is presented during week seven by team three. Uh, as you recall, distributed cognitive is a process in which cognitive resources are socially shared in order to extend individual cognitive resource or to accomplish something that an individual could not achieve alone. So an uh, example of cognitive resources can be your friends, lecturers, internet, and library books. So example for CS4249 final exam, the only cognitive resource you have is the help sheet. Uh, very picking is a widely has a variety of widely used techniques. So there are six six techniques used. Uh, this is important in part of the quiz. Uh. So just a <laughs> so, uh, but I will just mention about three three examples from here. So the first one I will, uh, I will talk about is the citation searching. As you all know that uh, for the presentation, right, we need to look for information. So we are based on the sites by the sites used for for the information. Then uh, area scanning. Area scanning is used in physical area like uh, physical environment like library. So. A uh, user, uh, I mean, a person may either uh, search in a catalog arrangement or randomly manner. Depends on the area of interest that interests him yeah, inside the library. Yeah. Then the final one is the author searching. So, for example, for me, uh, when I'm searching for the berry picking, I will look at the author's name, then see what. Like maybe example Marcel Bates, then what other articles she had wrote about very picking. So the diagram here shows the evolving search of very picking. How a user changes the source, I mean the key terms, the search key terms and queries as he finds new information. So this loop continues until he finds all the answer. So an, 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 an analogy to this is the is how a forager uh, picks his berries. As you all know that berries does not come in bunches, it's scattered in bushes. So, so for a forager, he, he need to pick berries one by one from each uh, bushes. It's like how user search for information, bits and pieces of it, to finally get his answers. So application for HCI, as you all know, 
you all will find information for internet is usually through Wikipedia and below the Wikipedia you will find related topics to the retrieve uh, info you all uh, search for it. Uh, as you all know that uh, information seeking application is like a puzzle or a maze. Uh, it does not, uh, I mean one site does not give you all the answer. So you need to search for a variety of sources to find find all the answers. And other than that, there's like web browser. Yeah, as you all know that web browsers has been evolved over the past decades. Uh, then to help user uh, to help enhance the user experience, right? Uh, Google browser, uh, Google Chrome has implemented uh, several uh, user interface to help user find their resources. For like example, uh, like tabs, bookmarks, history. History uh, allows users to go back to its previous search. Uh, tabs, tabs allows users to, to find multiple information as, I mean, Concurrently, yeah. So by combining these two applications, you will have many accessible varies. So, so now I will pass on to Kaiki, who will talk us about information for easy. Thank you, Yao Zhong. And this that's the sum up of our coverage of very picking. And now let's proceed on to information for easy. Now before uh, I really get into the details of information foraging, I'll first introduce two, pers two people that uh, which are the authors of information foraging, which are who are Peter Ferroli and Scott Card. They started developing info information foraging in the early 1990s, together with the colleges in Parks, which is previously known as Xerox. Uh, now, to understand this concept, you have, you have actually need to know one more concept, which is which we have prepared a short clip uh, to help you understand the concept, the analogy. Okay. You just need to take note on the action of the animals. actually relates to information foraging. The clip that you have just watched is actually the analogy of food foraging, which explains how animals hunt for food. Food foraging suggests that the eating habits of the animals revolve around maximizing the maximum maximizing energy intake over a period of time. Take for example, imagine you are the eagle over there and you come across a field full of rabbits and hare. Assuming that the energy taken to catch the, these animals and their nutri nutrition value is always, are always the same, which one do you think you will prefer to catch? I, I think it's not difficult to tell that the rabbit is a better choice. Peter and Scott also noticed this similarity between users' information searching patterns and the uh, animal food foraging strategy and came up with the theory food foraging, I mean, sorry, information foraging. This theory shows that information seekers use the same strategy as food foragers, which relies on cue in the environment to help them judge whether to continue foraging in the same patch or to continue foraging somewhere else. So 
Why is this theory even useful? First, it's for an undeniable fact that all humans are actually lazy. And just like food forager, information forager use a cost-benefit analysis where the benefits are the information that they seek and the cost is actually the time taken they take to find it. If we can facilitate finding and collecting information to maximize the allocation of human attention in the information that will be useful and we are able to optimize the seeker time and thus we can increase usability. So, there are actually a few concepts that were that is covered in information foraging, but for this presentation, we will only cover diet selection, cash living, and information stream. So, for diet selection, it's actually basically selecting the correct content and making it obvious for the users to find. Take for example, if a user is looking for the recipe to cook a meat, and you happen to be a developer of a recipe website, but you have a sub-quest which is to promote healthy ingredients. You, you would not want to just spam the users with the healthy ingredients. A uh, better way of doing would be uh, making the majority of your website to, uh, to fill the recipe, to give the recipe to your users, and then to make a small section of your website to recommend healthier food. Some techniques that you can use for diet selections are actually one, to ensure that the users know your website purpose. For example, if your website is to uh, give recipes, make sure they know that your website is a recipe website. And then second, is to guide to your user to what they need. There are two things you can do for this. It's simply by adding a searching feature, or two is to recommend, a, recommend uh, putting a recommendation link. And then lastly, which is to review the site content by, by just summing up what you have in your, in your home page. So for patch living, patch living is actually a concept to ensure that user stays in your website. There are actually two reasons that a user will leave your website. One is that your website no longer fulfills the needs of your users. And the second is related to the cost benefit cost-benefit assessment, which was touched earlier, earlier on. When, when the user finds that the cost of the current information patch outweighs the, the benefits that you give, the user will likely leave. So, some, things that, some techniques that you can encourage our users to leave is yeah, to stay is to keep your contents up to date. Now, of course, the contents have to be substantial enough and not full of rubbish. Uh, second is to distribute newsletter to remind them to come back. And that brings an end to my information foraging. And I'll pass on to Ken Long to recover the rest of that presentation. All right. So, um, it's one thing to find the prey that you want. And it's another thing to know that it's over there. So that's why the concept of information sent is very important in information foraging. Because um, like, like the animal that relies on the sense of smell to look for his prey, likewise in information searching, okay, the, the scent basically refers to um, the extent which users can predict what they'll find if they pursue a certain path through the website. So for example, if a website has a strong scent, it means, okay, there's a very strong indicator that I will find the information that I want, and vice versa. So, how, how, does it, how is it used in practical examples? All right. Here's an example of a website with a weak scent, okay? It's from Wiki Travel. Okay, so, um, so it's a travel guide, you know, on San, San Francisco, okay? Now, um, now you see the website is trying to make yourself look nice, you know, with all these verbs like see, do, learn, and so on. But verbs themselves are, are very weak, and some of the stuff can fall into many definitions. So for example, the word, um, the word drink. Okay, now drink can include many things, okay? It can, it can include, okay, I want to go and sit at a cafe and watch people. I want to go to a bar 
to and get some get some drinks. I want to go to a club and so on. And in this case, this drink section contains all these three categories. So if I only want one of them, then how am I going to know does this you know have what I need? And then take a look at the name itself. Okay, um, San Francisco. Is it the city itself, or does it also include the surrounding areas like Berkeley, South San Diego, and so on? Okay, now, so what happens when you have a website with a weak scent? First of all, you mislead users because they're not sure where do I need to, to find in order to get the information that I need. So they're going to spend a longer time looking for what they need, and consequently, user experience will be damaged. Here's an example of a website that we think has a strong scent. Okay, Craigslist. So, the first, what is your first impression of the website? It looks messy, you know, with all these words around. But, okay, but take a look. There are a lot of bold fonts over here that will draw you immediately to the categories that you need. So, for example, I'm looking for iPhone. Okay, now, so I can just straight away look down in the category where it says, um, appliances, and then, and then I continue to look into to various um, subcategories, and from there I can easily get the iPhone that I need. Okay, so just because something has a strong scent doesn't mean that it's necessarily good. It comes with a condition. You have to make sure that whatever that you're leading the, the user to really contains what he needs. So if he goes there. With, a, with an expectation, I'm going to get what I need. But when he goes there, he doesn't find it. Okay, he's going to be very disappointed indeed. So, um, so how how do we summarize this? We have basically came up with a table, you know, that that comes with two things. First, I want to find what I need, and second, um, what what is the scent that leads me over there? So it's kind of like the like all your high school, you know, science thing, precision and, and accuracy. So ideally, you want something that, that, that leads you to the place, you know, to the place that you need, and it contains the content that you have. Okay. So um, what is the application for HCI? Okay. I want to make sure that the website has contains a moderate amount of detail. Because, okay, because first of all, it is not enough detail, okay? This is an example of a crappy, you know, website, okay? So this is a company website, but first of all, where is the email button, okay? For information, this is the email button. Can you all sense it? No. Okay. And what do all these buttons do? Okay, I see, you know, um, different types of foils and so on, but uh, does it contain, you know, descriptions? Where can I, um, if I want to see it, if I want to buy it, does it contain this, you know, specifications? And I don't even know, like, where to start on this website, because there's nothing, there's nothing on this home page. A lot of users, when they go online, they have a pretty short attention span, so if you do not give them any idea, okay, what am I supposed to do? You just need your site. Okay. On the other hand, you do not want to have a website that is too detailed either. Okay. So this is an example of a website that sells um, coffee. And okay, you notice that it contains a lot of details. Okay, like um, pictures, various you know, testimonies, persuasions, and and so on. However. If I am a buyer, and I, and I just say, okay, all I want is a brief introduction, and where, where can I buy the thing, and, and so on. So I won't, be needing, I won't be needing all these things. If I see so much details about very little places where I can actually do something, I'm going to be confused. And as a result, once again, it, it needs to poor user experience. Okay. We have picked the British Airways website as an example of a of a good website. So, first of all, as you can see, they they have major headings that suggest the user, okay, what am I supposed to do? So, 
they have already done this research beforehand. So that's why, you know, in, in HCI, that's why we, it has always been mentioned, evaluation is very important beforehand. Okay, details, you know, are only given when the heading is selected and there's proper display of information. I only see the information if I need to see it. No unnecessary stuff. So, um, we've almost come to the end of the presentation. I'm going to make a, give you a summary of what, what we've learned. So, first of all, berry picking. Okay, there is no single source that contains everything that you need in information search. So, berry picking essentially means, okay, there are a lot of different sources with some of the information that I need. So, I come over to the first, first berry, pick a little bit of information, and change the target, go on to the next one, and so on and so forth, until I have what I need. So if you want to make a good application, you need to provide um, good avenues between the sources so that they can skip easily from one bush to another. Okay, and for information foraging, all right, people are lazy and they prefer the easiest and most beneficial source, okay? and. You need to maintain a good scent, which I clearly suggests to the person, okay, this source contains what you need, and it does contain what you need. Okay, and then uh, you need to find ways to retain users' loyalty by encouraging users to stay. So that's all for our presentation.